Hello and welcome to the first of two videos that I'm making to begin unit three. So we're doing this to save a little bit of time um, because of the PSAT tomorrow. So let's get right into our first section, but um, to introduce unit three, it's all about populations. So we could be talking about humans, which we will be uh, towards the latter half of this unit. But at the beginning, we're gonna be talking about just populations in general, which are just a, a group of organisms of the same species within a given area. So uh, in section 3.1, we're gonna talk about generalist versus specialist species. And this is already a topic that we should be pretty familiar with already. So um, let's go over a little bit of it now. At this point, you should be able to tell me a generalist and a specialist species. So, um, you know, take a moment to perhaps write one down and describe that species, why it qualifies as a generalist or why it qualifies as a specialist. So some characteristics of generalist species, they have the ability to thrive within a lot of different places. So places that can vary in terms of conditions like temperature, rainfall, um, landscape, um, plant species, et cetera. So uh, these are a type of species that given changing conditions, they will um, be less negatively affected by a changing condition. So because of the fact that they can thrive in a pretty uh, wide variety of conditions, then when those conditions change, they will be more likely to um, be okay. So uh, in addition to being, being able to survive in a variety of conditions, they have the ability to uh, use a lot of different types of resources. So in most cases, we're going to be talking about food. Um, and an omnivore, which you should hopefully remember, are not just an herbivore, but also a carnivore. They eat plants. They can eat meat. Um, these types of animals are generalists. Okay, so some examples, coyote, uh, they have a very large habitat. They can survive in a lot of different conditions and they are carnivore, but they can eat a lot of different organisms. Raccoons, uh, this has been the example that we have been using a lot. They're an omnivore. They eat a lot of things. Um, they eat a lot of human uh, waste as well, um, like garbage. And they, uh, like coyotes can live in a lot of different conditions. White-tailed deer, I mean, they have the largest distribution, uh, within North America in terms of mammals. Um, so that's something, a lot of different habitats in North America. Um, and they eat a lot of different plants and trees. Uh, the American hornbeam. So this is going to be our plant example. So they have the ability to survive in normal soil, just like all uh, trees in their habitat. But they also have the ability to tolerate uh, flooding so they can um, thrive within the floodplains in areas that might get flooded, uh, whereas other trees don't have that ability. So uh, because of that, that makes them a bit of a generalist. Okay, specialist species characteristics. These types of species uh, are really conditioned to survive in one or a small variety of habitats. Um, so that basically means that they're better adapted than a generalist. Um, so they, they really thrive in their habitat but their range is much, much smaller. Um, and as a result, um, they are gonna be more sensitive to changing conditions. So they're gonna be more negatively affected than generalists if the conditions in a habitat uh, are changing. So they have a limited diet as well. They might only eat certain things, maybe one thing, maybe only a couple of different things but that limited diet also can have negative impacts if their food suddenly um, decreases in quantity or perhaps disappears altogether. 
Um, and herbivores typically can fall into this category. Okay, so a couple of examples of specialists, giant panda, definitely. Um, they really only eat bamboo. They're uh, adapted to one specific habitat. So they're considered specialist because of that. Koalas, similarly to pandas, they only like to eat really one thing and that's eucalyptus leaves. Uh, and then a couple of plant examples. So a cactus, which is shown over here on the right, um, they are conditioned to low water uh, availability. And actually, if they get too much water, that can uh, lead to their death, which would be uh, kind of ironic, right? Um, but they also are adapted to the hot um, conditions. And if there is a cold winter, it could result in their death. Uh, Venus flytrap, we know that uh, so they can photosynthesize, but they have to get their nutrients from uh, insects for the most part. So they have to rely on these animals uh, getting trapped, so falling into their mouth, and then they will digest them. So the problem is they don't have the ability to move or hunt, so they're completely dependent on these things just falling into um, their mouths here. Okay, so we're going to end this section with just a comparison of the niches of a generalist versus a specialist. So our generalist, a raccoon, has a much larger um, width in their niche, whereas the specialist is much narrower. Uh, this region where they overlap, that's where they're going to compete. So this is competition right here in gray uh, for the resources here. Um, so again, think about it in this way. If perhaps... Uh, this this portion of the resources were to disappear okay that would have a small impact on our raccoons because we have a, a much larger area over here that of resources that are still available whereas our panda would be very negatively impacted by that um, because most of its niche has now disappeared um so this really just helps to illustrate a couple of concepts of so competition right here, as well as the uh, the width of our niches, where if the same amount of a resource disappears, that would less negatively impact our uh, generalist compared to our specialist. Okay, and that's all for 3.1.